Hey everybody, welcome to Two Guys on Beer. I am the incredibly tardy Johnny Bellata, and with me the incredibly prepared and well-groomed uh, Dave Motorana. Well-groomed is good. I wouldn't go so far as to say prepared. Yeah, well... But we're going to try some beer today. <laughs> <laughs> I really have been in need of beer. It's been a rough week, so I, I'm ready to jump right in. And uh, today, today we got two. We got Otter Creek, um, their winter ale. Uh, it's, a, it's an American brown ale. It's an American brown air raspberry brown ale brown? with raspberries. And how much luck have we had with fruit beers? Somewhere around zero, none. Zero. About so, zero. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do okay with that one. And then we have an India, a really unique India Pale Ale from Belgium, which you don't get most India Pale Ales from Belgium. And this is from the Rainbow Brewery. It's pronounced. It's uh, from Browery um, Ray. Re, yeah, it's it's the Ray the Regenbrug. Regenbrug. It's R E G E N B O O G. Yeah, uh, they're they're you know story, but. Not very, you know, not very common beer. Very small brewery, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. They're, they're a neat story. But let's start out with the Otter Creek. Creek. Okay. Um, from Vermont, correct? From Vermont. The the Wolver family, back in 1991, uh, went ahead and started a little local brewery, and uh, started growing and growing, and eventually uh, expanded and purchased the then-fledgling Otter Creek Brewery. Since then, they've transformed it into what they consider to be a very socially responsible brewery. Um, a lot of what they do, they consider very green. They get a lot of um, a lot of their uh, ingredients are locally brewed, so they don't have to be shipped too far. Um, they're 98%, 98% of what goes into the beer is organic. The water is directly from Vermont, um, and they're certified by the Vermont Farmer, the, the Vermont Organic Farmers Association. So what you're getting is you're getting a, uh, an organic beer. And we talked about uh, we had a beer last week at St. Peter's. Yeah, um, organic. That was organic, and we uh, we felt that the organicness of it lent something to the taste, and it did. I mean, but that usually you usually get that with anything organic. Uh, it, it will lend to to the taste, and and that was actually an English brown ale. This being American brown, so it, it derives from that, uh, made with all American uh, ingredients, and yep. it gets this brown color from from the malt that's used in it. Uh, usually darker malts, and chocolate sometimes, and uh, sometimes crystal. So, um, and we talked about we talked about brown ales. Brown ales are basically anything that's not a pale ale and anything that's not a dark ale. And I mean, it's a huge, broad range. And in this case, you know, it's a brownish ale. Um, for uh, Otter Creek, Otter Creek, everything is unfiltered and everything is naturally carbonated, which means the beer is not carbonated when they put it into the bottle. They put a tiny little bit of extra sugar at the bottom of the bottle. They pour it in, and what yeast is still alive goes ahead, produce, you know, eats up on the sugars, yeah. and then creates carbon dioxide as a byproduct. It's how you would do it if you were home brewing and didn't have a forced induction system. So, let's go ahead and give it a sniff. You can smell the raspberry uh, on this. Uh, there's a little bit of hop uh, back. Uh, there's a little bit of hop back. It's got a very nice amber color to it. Um, typical of a winter yeah, beer. Give it a little bit of a swirl. It opens up a little bit more. I'm getting raspberry, but a tart raspberry. Yeah, I'm really getting, tart. Uh, maybe, a little, maybe it's complemented by some spice. I think it's complemented. Well, being a winter beer, it probably is complemented by some spice. So um, I, I, I have to admit to though this, and I'll, I'll be totally honest, I don't like the nose of this beer. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit displeasing. Um, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's going to taste displeasing. It just doesn't have a great. The raspberry is sour, so you know I think that's what you're getting on the nose. Yeah, let's, let's see how let's see how we get it in the taste. Let's say, give me a fucking. Dude. It's an interesting flavor. It's a little over roasted. Um, I believe it's over roasted too. The, those roasted uh, malts are using it. It's a little bit too much. The raspberry flavor doesn't hit you uh, very hard, which I like. I like that it's there. It's present. You can taste it's a little the, the sourness of a raspberry. Yeah. Or when you bite into a raspberry, you usually get that. Um, that initial sweetness, and then it, it kind of like hits you like right back in here. You get that little tingly feeling in the back of your throat, and this gives you that, which I like about it. Um, yeah, I gotta not really say fruity. for the first time, like we have a fruit beer where the fruit is actually complementary to the back end of the flavor, and it lasts. It's a long flavor on this thing. Yeah, the mouthfeel this is a little. I mean, it's flavor. This is a little dry. It's uh, it's not as heavy. It's got a very subtle uh, hop after, and. Um, you know, not too bad. I mean, I wouldn't rate this very high. I'd give it low 80s. Yeah, I mean, maybe like an 82. Yeah. 
it seems like I'm rating a lot of beers in that range, but it's, I mean, like, it, it, it's good and it's something you should try out, but it's not, it's not knocking my socks off. No, it's not knocking my socks off either, so I'm giving it, I'll give it about an 80, yeah. uh, and it's that's borderline. I mean, it's good, it's decent, not quite the winter beer that I was uh, hoping for out of it, but not a winter warmer it is, first an American brown ale, so don't let the name confuse you. All so right. let's, uh, let's move on, on to a very rare India okay. Pale Ale. This is by the, and I'm, the Regenboog, I just spelled it for you. Brewery. <laughs> Everybody it's, got it's, that? It's a very small, very small brewery out in Belgium. As far as, from what I can find about the brewery, they're actually looking to expand. Um, this is, the interesting part about a lot of the beers that they have is they don't have a lot of permanent beers. And this is their IPA Plus. And from everything that I can find on the internet, whoa. Yeah. From everything I can find on the internet about these guys, um, this is a single batch brew, which means this has only been brewed once. So if you want to try it, go out and try it now. And you know, it I'll may become part of the permanent collection. Don't worry about it. Um, it may become part of the permanent collection, but who knows? Um, so this was started in 1995 by Johan uh, Brandt, J-O-H-N. I'm assuming that's Johan. Johan. Johan Brandt. Or um, John, if you're here. Now they call it an IPA, but. Any place that actually talks about the beer calls it a Belgian strong pale ale. Yeah, I was a little confused about that in the research. This seems to border the, the line between the two of them. Belgian pale ales are, um, Belgian pale ales were originally brewed during World War II as a competitor to Pilsners, um, except for the fact that they tend to be a little bit hoppier, unfiltered, um, and then you add the strong name onto it and it's a Belgian strong pale ale, and that just it bumps up the alcohol like nice and high. This is coming in at 10%, 10% alcohol by volume on a, a Belgian pale ale, this Belgian strong pale ale. Now this head is gorgeous. It is unfiltered, I mean, to the hilt. There's like large uh, chunks there is of sediment huge in the bottom of chunks of sediment. I mean, it almost looks like a gel inside of this yep. that I swirled around from the bottom of the glass. It is, uh, it has a very robust smell, a very frothy head. Um, I mean, wow. the pale ales are going to be flowery. They're going to be. Um, this is a very flowery. Yeah, and you're getting a lot of flower off this. And to be an India pale from Belgium, who Belgium not usually using hops in their in their brewing process. Well, that's the thing. Is it an IPA or is it a Belgian strong pale ale? We're gonna have to taste. We're gonna have to really give it a taste to, to check. Right. But I mean, an IPA would usually be a pale ale would be less hoppy. Um, and more alcohol content, and IPA would have more hops. This seems to have a hoppy nose. Um, this is completely unfiltered. Pale ales are often filtered. Um, IPAs are often filtered, excuse me, uh, and Belgian pale ales are not. So let's give it a try. Yeah, man, taste it. Oh, that's really, really good. Well balanced, not too hoppy. Um, a very wow. sweet flower. Oh, um, yeah, that is really good. The If they're using... I couldn't find much information about what the ingredients would go into this beer, but I can taste very, very subtle hop. Very subtle. And I would say hops have been added for aroma as well. I would give it maybe some golding hops probably been used for the floral aroma. Very floral aroma. It's got a little bit of an alcohol kick at the end, which is really actually yeah. pretty nice. Very balanced, too. It's, it's not crisp. It's very smooth. Um... It's very, I don't want to say sweet, but it's very florally sweet. Yeah, you're going to, when you smell this beer, you're going to think it's going to be very sweet and have that very, uh, you're almost Belgian double type, um, you yeah. know, feel to it. And it doesn't. And it's 10%. So, I mean, like, you know, wow. This is something you got to go out and try. I'm going to give this like a 92. I give this high, high marks too. Ooh. That is yum. High marks. 92, 93 for me as well. I got to agree with Dave on this one. It's very good. Um... Go out and find this if you can find if this. Please can. go out and find it. You can you can probably find it if you're in Philadelphia at the foodery or your local. Yep. Uh, we'll have show notes at the bottom. We're running out of time. Yeah, we're so running out of time. Goodbye. But thanks to National Mechanics. Yes, National Mechanics. Thank you very much. Thanks to the foodery for uh, supplying us with these beers, and thanks to the viewers for still watching us. So for two guys on beer, I'm Johnny Bellotta. I'm Dave Monterana. Go enjoy some beer.